Okay guys, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting on some insulation, but because these are solid walls, the insulation has to go on the inside of the walls. If it was a, a non-solid wall, like a normal standard in modern houses, they will be filled with like a polystyrene beading, which then welds up really hard, okay, and they get filled up. Or they can put with like some fiberglass sheeting in, okay, but this time what we're going to be doing is putting some metal strips on here, and then on top of that we'll go uh, poly like um, polystyrene backed plasterboard. And then after that, it will be skimmed by Charlie, and a couple of you guys will get to have a chance of doing that. And then after you got after that, the painters of this world will come in and they will paint this all up, okay? But it's all on the external walls only. And why do you think that is? These have got no insulation, which means that these will take around about, I think it was about 60% or something of our heat away from the house, more than the windows. Because the windows are only a little tiny part of the house. Okay, so that's why we're insulating it. To bring it up is probably you know to bring it up to a good standard so that actually this keeps insulated and also this house then will be something that other people in Wolverton can come in have a look at and go how did they do it and then take it from there Fantastic. so it's just that we're going to put the insulation on okay as I said with a metal beading with a polished diary with a kind of a which is polished iron backed with a plasterboard finish okay yeah. and then we'll put the re put the skirtings on we'll readjust all the plugs and the sockets because they don't need to be done, that we don't come under regulations for that, okay, so, yeah. alright, and so yeah. what we're going to do is crack on, I think Bill's got you guys organised and we're going to take it from there, okay? Yeah. So, okay. Lovely. Just taking off the electrics just to see how much cable there is attached to the back of the electrics. As this needs to be moved forward about 70 mil. How long have we known? Keep it in the foundation. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really good news. We've got so much cable on here. Actually, we don't need to. We can put a new back on the back of that, and that'll absolutely be fine. I've measured up the wall to find out the height of the floor to ceiling and now I'm marking out a couple of the, uh, these are the wall battens as I was explaining earlier on, the, these are the wall battens that go across, they've got an indent groove here which we'll put some pilot hole drills into and then these will be drilled to the wall so at the moment we've just got a tin snipper which is a bit uh, very sharp And then, as you can see, all tin snipped up. One of these will go against there like that. And then that gives us something to fasten the plasterboard and the polystyrene to that. And the reason it's metal is because the polystyrene will sweat because you imagine you've got heat from this side and cold from that side. It used to be that we used to put timber battens on, but they've worked out they go rotten and also they'll kind of, if there's some. Um, some screws or nails so that the rust will go through the nails and come out on the other side of the wall. So now we use metal because it takes a lot to actually uh, to create the sort of condensation that is in there. That's it. All right. And every two or three foot, same again. All right. So you just keep going on that, buddy. I'm marking out where the holes that we've drilled through the metal are so that when we drill them into the wall we know exactly where they're going to marry up basically. Just putting the raw plugs in now. Uh, just going to measure it now for the clearance for the skirting board, which is. Oh, it's because it's caught on the carpet, right? 
So if to Tommy just lifts that. Right, this side's not. I don't want to take that off. Okay. The chimney breast is a bit tight. So you just got a saw, man. Yeah, I'll just do it. So you've got to remember, though, it's. The walls are all out of alignment. Sorry, mate. If I get a saw, I can just take it out in one, one salute. I'm just using not a saw or anything like this. So just literally. They look, can you see that? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter so much this side, because there's going to be another board going into that. Alright, so that doesn't matter this side. So this side is the most so important. Just run and jump and you line it up first of all to make sure that it fits, and then we do all the measurements afterwards. So we just make sure that it's going, which it will do. Because there's a socket just in the corner there, uh, we've got to make a, a little hole to allow the wires to come through so that when we put the actual main box in there, we know it's exactly where it needs to be. So all I'm doing at the moment is marking out for a corner, just marking out for it, and then we'll cut it out. This here is a plasterboard knife, like a saw or a plasterboard saw, whatever. As you see, made a hole no bigger than that because there's, there's wires can get through. As long as the wires can get through, that's fine. Too big a hole and you might be out of alignment for where the actual wires need to be. Alright, so as you can see, the wires in there. This will all go back now and we'll take it from there. Right, don't go any lower than that. Look, it's sinking in. It will do because at the moment it's springing, but when I show you, don't go any lower, it's because it's quite springy. Using those black screws there, follow the line down, same on that side, follow the line down. They're called drywall screws, and they just, it, the reason they use nowadays instead of nails is because they literally are quicker, they're a lot faster, aren't they, than with nails, whereas actually you can do this on your own, whereas in the old days with nails you had to get somebody to hold the board and everything else like they that. So. Longer. 